I'm not sure that anybody, anytime, anywhere, has had a bigger... We're on Facebook Live right now, by the way. Uh, Dan Dock at GSPN. Uh, I'm not sure anybody, anytime, anywhere, has had a better spring slash, I guess you could call this now summer, than Indiana basketball. And not a bad one for Purdue, too. Carson Edwards came back. Uh, Noel Eastern came back. No gel, however you say his name. Eastern came back. So pretty damn good day. This is the day kids have to decide uh, to come back or to stay in college. And Indiana, I'm telling you, I- I'm telling you right now, you go. there will be no IPFW beating What happened to what? You don't hear what's in, it, what's in my ear? I don't hear it. Huh? I hear the other station. You not hear it? No. Why do I? What happened? He, hello, hello. Do you got me now? I don't know. I'm on programming one. Now I'm back. Hello, people. Uh, I am back. Jeez. Ah, oh, my man. Boom. Coffee. Two espressos. I'm gonna be wired up today. And by the way, give me my damn credit card. Yeah, I got it. He didn't have my credit card. Jack's trying to steal my credit card. Still the numbers already. Yeah, he stole the numbers. Got memorized, he's got Kyle. these numbers memorized. Ah, oh, but anyway, Indiana University. What a good, what a good day for IU. Serious business. I mean, hey, let's be honest. Um, you start out the summer and you have what? You have nothing. Well, you don't have nothing, but you don't have Romeo Langford. You don't have. Oh, you don't know if you're going to have Juwan Morgan. I, I'm just a little bit surprised. And, again, I, I, I will tell you that I think general managers in the NBA are complete clowns. And there is uh, evidence of that, Kyle, with with our guy Colangelo. We'll get into that here in a minute. But um, I, I'm i telling you, Juwan Morgan is going to play in the NBA. Juwan Morgan is going to play in the NBA, and he's going to play in the NBA uh, for a team that wants to win. I think Indiana University is a Big Ten contender right now. I think Indiana and I think Purdue the same. And I think both of them got great news. Not good news. Both of them got great news. Uh, and you know what? Good for both. Because, look, I love when both are good. Uh, people say, oh, you hate IU. I, I Hating IU is farthest from the truth. I will do this, Zach Johnson, just for you. Uh, hating IU is farthest from the truth. I absolutely love Indiana. Uh, Indiana to my core, but I can't stand that Indiana has now become like every other school. And I've told Fred Glass this. This is not something I haven't told Fred Glass. Uh, but anyway, not today. Indiana is rolling and Purdue is rolling. Uh, Carson Edwards and Juwan Morgan, my opinion, will be the favors along with Romeo Langford for player of the year in the Big Ten. Michigan State got good news. Michigan State's news. Nick Ward did what Nick Ward should do. Nick Ward's returning to the school at Michigan State uh, because he decided, hey, look, uh, the NBA, he's not ready because he's too fat. Nick Ward needs to slim down. Nick, Nick Ward needs to put himself in a position where uh, size is no good. Where, well, let me put it this way, where conditioning is not a problem. Juwan Morgan's just going to get bigger and stronger, and I'm telling you, this time next year, Juwan Morgan's going to be somebody that people really want to draft. Uh, DeVincenzo, DeVincenzo Dante is signing with an agent and is going to keep his name in the draft. Nobody helped themselves more than Dante DeVincenzo, or however the hell you say his name. Nobody. Because here's the deal with him. People knew he was a killer. People knew he could shoot. People knew he could do all these things, okay? But what they didn't know was what a great athlete this kid was, and he dominated the combine. He was a highest vertical jump, all these other things he was first in. So Dante DiVincenzo stays in the draft. Nick Ward goes back. Uh, Carson Edwards goes back. Here's something. Remember this. There is a player on the Colts named Ross Travis. Ross Travis's cousin is Reed Travis. Reed Travis withdrew from the draft. He is really good. Really, really good. I guarantee you in the next 10 minutes, somewhere you're going to hear Indiana is going to be involved with Reed Travis. If Indiana can get Reed Travis, who is a 6'8 transfer, who averaged 20 points a game and 9 rebounds last year, Indiana might be a national championship contender next year. I'll say this, if Duke gets Reed Travis, and when Reed Travis went to Stanford, he picked Stanford over Duke. If he goes to Duke, they are going to be the favorite to win the national championship next year. That's how good this kid is. 
as a senior, he's graduated from Stanford, so he's really smart. He plays a controlled game where he isn't going to ruin Indiana. If Indiana can get involved with that kid, you add Juwan Morgan, uh, you add uh, Romeo Langford, you have a team that's going to compete for a national championship. Mark my words. Now, I don't think Indiana's going to get the kid. I don't think they would be the favorite right now. But I guarantee you Indiana is going to go after the kid. And here's the deal with that. Usually I bitch, whine, and moan if guys get treated unfairly at the end of the bench and lose scholarships. Not anymore. Be gone. It's time to win. So remember the name Reed Travis. Now, if I'm Reed Travis, i got to think seriously of going to Duke. Duke has a top five. Hey, look, let's put it this way. The name Reed Travis now, Indiana will have it in here because of his cousin, Ross, who is kind of the kid's idol. He's kind of the kid's idol. Now, Ross Travis, if you remember, was brought late in the year to the Colts. He played basketball. I thought he was a pretty good basketball player at Penn State. Never played football. He's on the Colts right now. He's like their third tight end. Or whoever, who knows? You got you know a bunch of tight ends. He's on the list. He played some last year. was pretty good on special teams. He is the kid's idol. Idol, not as somewhat idle. Role model, let's put it that way. Which immediately puts you to where, hey, let's go, come to Indiana. Now, you would say, well, Ross Travis played at Penn State. The kid's not going to Penn State. He's just not doing it. Because if you leave, if you leave Stanford and you're a fifth year grad transfer, you're going somewhere you can win a national championship. And with the news today, of Juwan Morgan coming back, and the new and the news a few weeks ago uh, of what's his face coming here, Romeo Langford. You got a, you, you got a squad, and and and, and let's be honest, uh, Devontae Green's going to have a hell of a year. I promise you that a hell of a year. I mean, he is going to have a big time year unless something ridiculous happens, unless he is not paying attention to the coaches, which is always in play. Uh, the big kid Davis, Indiana's going to have a hell of a team. We're going to talk to Juwan Morgan coming up at twelve thirty. And in talking to Juwan Morgan, uh, we're just simply going to ask him about the process and what maybe people thought he wasn't good at. What wasn't his thing? Because if I am a general manager in the NBA, i got to look hard at Juwan Morgan. Juwan Morgan's the best one-on-one post, low post score in the Big Ten last year, and I'm including some pretty good players. Like, I'm including Mo Wagner. You know, I'm, I'm including some guys. The only guy that was close to him that really couldn't be guarded one-on-one uh, was the big kid Haas. But I know this, every time I did a game, or more importantly, to me anyway, when Ohio State went down to Bloomington and played against Indiana, if you remember the game, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, it was like a two-point game. Indiana isolated Jawan Morgan on the block. My thought immediately was, oh man, hope they don't give him a three-point play because he's definitely going to get a bucket. Where's Ashley Walden Owens been, Kyle? We're so happy to see Ashley Walden. She have a new baby, or not a new baby anymore. Mm-hmm. How old's that baby? Like two. S- seven now? Two. Love Ashley. P. Ashley was there from the get go. When she came out with the sexy Fifty Shades of Grey voice, it's still it's still earth shattering. Love that woman. Hey Dan, I'll take some questions. Uh, we're on Facebook Live. I'll take some questions. Is that a Cubby's hat? Yes, of course. And I've never said Cubby's in my life. Anybody that says Cubby's to me. Uh, I'm not liking. Uh, what's IU ceiling? Turney, Sweet 16? Who knows? I don't know. Look, you never predict Indiana basketball until after Halloween. After Halloween, because there's always some stupidity at IU after Halloween. The whole Devin Davis thing where Devin Davis tried to run over the car. The car didn't run over Devin Davis. He tried to run over the damn car. Hey, this Halloween, IU, stay out of trouble and you have a pretty good year. But no, IU has a really good team. Really good team, I think. I mean, you got experience. You got some guys that can play. You got McRoberts in there as a glue guy. You got a really good team. Purdue should have a really good team. They love this transfer kid. They love him. And you got the Fitzner kid transferring in. You got a bunch. You got all kind of things going on. So, you know, let's be honest here. Boiler up. Glad Carson will be back. You should be. Purdue should be very happy Carson Edwards came back. Look, Carson Edwards was very, very impressive. Very impressive in the combine. The problem with Carson Edwards is this. He's too small. And people say, hey, look, can he score? Can he play at his size? And I don't know the answer. That's the question with him. 
His mother got mad at me, which is so ridiculous. I said 8,627 nice things about him. The one thing that I said about him was, uh, well, you know, he, he's short. And apparently she lost her mind. And, and I could tell I was sitting, I knew who she was. And I was flying to Houston for the Final Four, and she was on the same plane. I could tell she wanted to say something, and I was ready, Kyle. I was ready. I don't take no crap from mamas. I don't want to hear, well, you don't say nothing to mamas, then mamas don't say nothing to me. I was going to ask you, so all the nice stuff I've said about your son, that's what you're going to give me? Get away. Get the hell away from me. Hey, Dan, you have blue blockers. Yeah, well, I didn't know they looked as bad, but there, see them right there? That's my 1070 glasses. I did seriously lose my glasses in Geist. I didn't even know I jumped in. I didn't know I had them when I jumped in. My friend goes, glasses! And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, don't you know, dumbass, you had your Ray-Bans on? I just bought first pair of good glasses I ever bought in my life. They la- When did I go to L.A.? Three weeks ago? I bought them three weeks ago. Bought them a Geist. So I'm only wearing $10 glasses. If you have $10 shades, you want to send... No, not, not $10. $10 or less that you want to send me, I'll wear them. If they advertise, you can put them right across here as advertising. I'll wear them for you. Don't wear $10 shades. For $10, and I bought a pair at uh, the Four Winds Lakeside Marine. Yeah. Spot. Yep, I'm sure you can do it somewhere in Geist. The little floaty things that go on. That's what I need. your glasses. Yes. If you jump in, they float. I don't know what they're called, but they're, it's only going to cost you 10 bucks. Water wings. There you go. Like little kids. <laughs> they go on each side of your Yes. Of your, uh, yes. <laughs> And they have a little floaty piece on the back. Yes. And, hey, and then you can hang them down on your neck, too, if you, uh, yes. you know, want to take them off. Anymore. Yeah, and I could be cool. Yeah. Like those guys that hang them down on their neck. Uh, the only way that I act cool is when I'm reading at home and I wear Lee's bright re- cheating glasses when I used to before I had Lasix. I used to put them down like this. And I would make this kind of face. I thought I looked like an educated old judge. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be fun. Hey, how about the Colts? Uh, hey, Dan, auction the glasses off for charity. All right. Um, tell you what. How about this? There's a GoFundMe page. There's a GoFundMe page for Jason Seaman, the man who stopped. There's also, I think, if somebody could find me a GoFundMe page for, um, oh, who's the young lady? Ella... Ella Whistler, she's in the hospital. If somebody finds a GoFundMe page, yeah, right? I got a $5 cup of coffee here because I put two extra shots in. You're right, John. I got ten. I got $5 shades and $5 coffee. I'll tell you this. If somebody can find me Ella's GoFundMe page, Ella Whistler, Whistler I will auction off a hour of co-hosting time and these incredibly cool shades to whoever wants to give the biggest donation. Let's do that. See if we can get that going. Hey, Dan, do you think Eric Gordon to the Pacers is a legitimate possibility? I don't. Eric Gordon's under contract with Houston. Eric Gordon uh, is locked up there. So I, I, I really don't. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised somebody just said that they heard that the kid Travis is going to Kentucky. I, I hadn't heard that, but that would be in play. That would make sense. Look, if you're going to leave Stanford, I mean, this is going to sound really bad, right? But if you're going to leave Stanford, you're not leaving for the academics. I mean, go to Kentucky. They say he's the front runner and that Villanova is involved. But here's the deal. Kentucky has three guys. Vanderbilt, Washington, and Wayne Gabriel. They also added this Montgomery kid, and Nick Richards, who can't play dead, is coming back. So I don't know. I'm telling you, Indiana is going to be involved in this at the end. I'm not saying right now. So, hey, uh, Kyle, get a hold of Archie Miller. Um, I'll call him. we got to tell him. Hey, look, we, we're making uh, – my phone's right there. I'm looking in my yeah. pockets, and my phone is what I'm using. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez, Kyle. I blame Kyle. Yeah, uh, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt, some shady stuff went on with Vanderbilt. I just don't know what it was because he was on a flight with me day of a game, and one of their assistants told me I was hallucinating. I said, okay, yeah, I hallucinate often. Hey, Only when you and I get on the Yale. What, you want to do it too? Jealous? Uh, Trey Turner or Sabonis for Eric Gordon? No. No. 
Ah, this is one I like about the Pacers. How about going after Marcus Smart? Bingo. I go after Marcus Smart hard. I am a big fan of Marcus Smart. I'll tell you why I'm a big fan of Marcus Smart. Hey, Chad, how are you? I'm a big fan of Marcus Smart because when Marcus Smart was a freshman, I broadcast their game against North Carolina State. North Carolina State was picked to win the ACC, but they were garbage, and I said so on the air, and everybody lost their mind. I interview Marcus Smart after the game. Swear to God, 18-year-old freshman. Now, you all know my disdain for anybody lacking experience in life. Marcus Smart was a dude, I'm like, damn. What's up, Annie? Uh, Marcus Smart was a dude, I'm thinking, man, I could follow this guy. Marcus Smart's a cat I could follow. Even as an 18-year-old, this dude had something to him. So good for him. Uh, Ben Bradley, always, always Dunkin' Donuts. But when I got here, I hadn't had time for coffee. And um, our intern, Jack, who's sitting right here, along with our intern, Savannah, uh, it was Jack's turn to go get coffee. And the, there's no Dunkin' Is there a Dunkin' Donuts around here? Because I'm not afraid to boycott Starbucks. I, 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 I'm, I've had enough of Starbucks and their political correctness and all their stupidity. I've had all their Starbucks I can handle. I, you know, I, I, I look, Starbucks my ass. Is he related to Key Smart? No. Everybody with the same last name isn't related. Sabonis for Haywood. I'm not. I look. I'm not even going to say Haywood who because I know the answer to that. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. All right. So there you go. A lot of things happening. Leading score at Florida. Returned a kid named Jalen Hudson, who's pretty good. Pacers' biggest need, you ask me. We went over this a lot yesterday. I, I'm going to say, and, and this is not what um, what maybe people want to hear, but you have to figure out. You must figure out what is, what are Glenn Robinson the third, and what are T.J. Leaf as players. What are they? You have them under contract. You drafted them. Or in T.J. Leaf's case, he, what are they? Are they the shooter you need? Are the are they the wing? Are they what are they? And if if they are two guys that you feel like are rotational players, and I'm not talking about rotational players in the middle of December uh, on a Wednesday, you know, in frickin' uh, um, Sacramento. I'm talking about in the playoffs. If you think they are good enough. To help you get to a point where you can win the Eastern Conference, then I believe your focus goes to a point guard. Maybe you upgrade Lance's spot in a big. That's what I think. Like, I think... I think that's what you do. I think that you... But you have to... Look, you drafted these guys. You took T.J. Leaf over O.G. Ananobe. So you see something in T.J. Leaf that others don't or didn't. Now, maybe T.J. Leaf was going to be a first-round pick. I don't know. So he's only been in the league one year. Thanks, Jim Hutton. you got to figure it out. You have – you like, who are you like, – hey, look. Will Barton be great. Somebody called in yesterday and said, what about Will Barton? That'd be great. Love to have Will Barton. Will Barton is a proven scorer, and he's a guy that kills the Pacers. But you got to figure out those two guys. Hey, Dan, out of hell with it. Let's get OG Ananobe, Farrell, Gordon, and make the Pacers a Hoosier All-Star team. Well, they didn't win nothing in college, so why are we doing that? Hell, Gordon couldn't get past the first round. Shot 7 of 51. Not that that still bothers me or anything. But it might make a freaking shot. Every time I see Gordon Clank, I'm like, oh, I saw that for seven games. Now I'm in radio. But I digress. Um, interesting today, Twitter is killing people. Like I have, I'll tell you right now, I have a burner account. Is that what they call it? Dan Dockage 1 is my second account. I don't have a first account anymore. Apparently it's been hacked. Kyle, what you sent, they sent me back the same thing. Um, and we'll figure it out. So, at Dan Dockage 1 is my account for right now. And I got all of one follower. 
I don't even know who the hell that is. Probably somebody, you know, snake in my account again. But but anyway, my regular Twitter account is hacked, and I'm working diligently with Twitter, I guess. But Twitter has had an interesting day. We all know what happened to that idiot Roseanne Barr yesterday. Roseanne Barr, not only did she cost herself, but think of all the people she cost, right? Think of the co-stars, the people behind the scenes. In fact, one of my daughter's friends worked on a show on Nickelodeon, and they all went from there to Roseanne. Now they're all out of jobs. But that's not where Twitter ended. Twitter hit the NBA last night. Twitter hit the NBA last night, and it hit the NBA hard. Now, the 76ers are investigating because of a report, I believe, by Yahoo, their boy wonder. We're, I'm going to tell you when we come back, what the hell this is all about? But apparently, Brian Colangelo has like five burner accounts where he's giving away information that you're not supposed to give away. FERPA kind of, was it FERPA? Yeah. Huh? HIPAA. HIPAA, yeah. Thank you. HIPAA stuff where you're giving away injury report, you're ripping the players. Well, coach. The, did he rip the coach in that too? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, what are you doing, man? Like, I tell you, Twitter is evil. Twitter is going to be the downfall of this 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 world that we live in. I'm not. I, feel, I find it nice to be off of it. I haven't had a single call from anybody. No, my bosses or nothing. Now it's going to cost me a little money because I was making a little money doing ads on Twitter. But I, probably worth it. I swear to God, probably. Hey, what's up, Colby? All right, we'll come back, 317-239-1070. When we come back, Jawan Morgan is going to join us. Get to your radio as quick as you can. We'll ask Jawan, what the hell, man? You went to the NBA, you're coming back to IU. IU is going to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. No, he wasn't. OG wasn't already gone. No, he was not. I got to look that up. Look that up. Crack staff. Somebody get on the internet. I think they drafted Leaf before they drafted OG. They did. They did, right? Yeah. Hey, if you're going to get on my burner account, the only thing I ever said on my burner account was I made fun of Holder after he blocked me. <laughs> That's like a year ago. We'll be back. All right, I got to go. I got to go, but I appreciate you all watching, listening. Once again, here's Kyle. Watch this. This is the interactions of our show. Hold on, Kyle. Let me turn this around. There he is. What's up? Kyle writes down stuff. If you're offended by what's on the top left about I'd rather shower, get over it. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. If you're triggered by it, I don't care. Uh, I don't care. Here's our interns. We can't really see you, Savannah. You are in the... Am I glowing? It's a, yes, you, <laughs> you have a halo around you. And here's Jack. Jack doesn't, though. Yeah. I no, probably do. You <laughs> are... It, it's, whenever you sit in that seat... You, what you see is the outline of you, but you never see your face. I'm incognito. Yes, you are. She's under witness protection, people. So if you saw that and she didn't do it, she wasn't there. She didn't know. She didn't say anything. No, she didn't. She's not talking. Look at Kyle. That's a nice ass on Kyle. Nice little back on. You can tell he works out. He does squats. And then, you know, you got the stones up here. What we got here, Mike Leach talking about pirates. Usually what we have here on this station usually is a soap opera. Yeah. <laughs> most, important important of the day, or most important question of the day for J-Mo. All right, huge, huge rap, rap beef going on I'm right Drake now. 100% of the time right now. Team Drake or Team Pusha T? Pusha T from the clips. You know, grinding. All right, Kyle, hold on. This is your chance to educate the world about rapping. What is this rap? What is, all right, you two, get over there because you're old school rap guy. Are you rap girl? No. Atta girl. I love you long time. Because we, we'll, hey, we'll, look. We'll sit on the cool side. Yeah, we're on the cool side <laughs> of the table. Look at these two clowns. All right, we got Pusha T yeah, against Pusha Drake. T. What's going on? Yeah, Pusha T uh, just, and I'm a big Drake fan, as you know. He just incinerated him last night in uh, Adi Don. Adi Don is, 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 is a diss track. What the hell are they talking about? Why are you talking about Adidas? Apparently Drake has a son that no one knew about. Really? He's been hiding him. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Free Drake's but, son! But Drake Free went, Meek Mill! Drake went after Pusha T's fiance. Uh-oh! So it's, like it's, went after a meeting on Twitter or? Uh, a song. A, a diss track. Oh, so it like, wasn't hitting on it. So basically, you know, our songs we like... 
uh, hit him up by Tupac. Yeah. Right? No, no, no Vaseline. Vaseline. No Vaseline. Oh, nice that's my song. Nice job by Jack. We can never play that song. That song is gross, <laughs> but I love that. I love the beats on that uh, song, yo. That's the current That's the current beef going on right now. So right. how did it start? I don't know. I think it was with Drake's new song, I'm Upset, I think. Is that what it is? Who's he upset with? Push a T? I guess Push a T. I don't know. <laughs> It's so funny to try to get involved in these rap beefs at 35. It was fun at, you know, 23 when yeah. everybody was in. The last good rap beef I remember was Jay-Z and Nas. And Nas dropped Ether, and that was pretty lethal. And that was pretty lethal, Double D. I, I have no clue. Uh, Jay-Z came out with Renegade. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was a, it was a good rap beef right there. i tell you this, though. I'll tell you this. They messed with Ice Cube, and when Ice Cube went with No Vaseline, he crushed them all. Now, he didn't want to crush, uh, he didn't want to crush Yellow, because Yellow's his friend. He crushed, oh, he crushed Easy. Do you have any idea what we're talking about? No, I literally have no idea. All right, let me idea. ask you a question. Yeah. Savannah, what, who, who would your rap beef be with? If you could beef with anybody in music, who would you want to beef with? By the way, we have a national I'd championship beef. coach coming on the show today I'd beef at 205. Who? Post Malone so hard. Coach Dabo Sweeney. Dabo Sweeney? Why are we having him on the wide receiver? Dion Kane. Oh, yeah, Dion Kane, Dabo Sweeney. Today, 205. Just added. 205, Dabo Sweeney. So, <laughs> what did you say your rap beef would be? I think Nicki Minaj. You're mad at her? Yeah. What's your problem? She's just. No, she's dating Eminem right now. That's awesome. She is? Yeah. Oh, there's too much going on. I'm on Cardi B's team. Cardi Cardi B against who? With Post Malone, hard right now. Post Malone's that little weasel guy. He's the guy with the hair and the tattoos. Ball the same, the same song, fifty-five thousand times. It's the same song. Oh, I heard that. That's does he do enema rap? What? Where these guys all sound like they're having an enema. They're, I gotta, <laughs> they got a wing. Hey, little Wayne. Yes, Jax that is, is little Wayne. I told you that was little Wayne. Jack's just mad because he's not rolling on candy paint like Post I Malone. I don't want to be rolling on what Post they Malone lost us again. Uh, You know who my rap beef is? I'm I, rap, Post Malone thinks the word apart and core rhyme. Now you tell me what world those apart two and words are. You tell me what world those two words rhyme in. Sing it for me. Let me know how's it said. He's like, I fall apart down to my car. Now, how do you make the words no, apart? That's not, even that's not music, but that's what he sounds like. And all the people my age these days are like, ah. because they the like it. Dude I've ever they seen think it's good. Life. They they think it's amazing. They think it, they feel they feel it. They're like, I felt that. This dude doesn't know what he's talking about. My rap beef hey, ball for me. My rap beef is with the entire genre of what I call constipation rap. You know this is on air. Everybody in the world can see this. There's only 47. There's only 50 people currently on it, but the whole world's going to get this. All right, wait, wait, let me ask you a question. I, I know that if you listen to every other song on that album, it's going to sound exactly the same. Wait, who is that? Whose album is that? Post That's Malone. Post Malone. All right, we're coming back with a little drizzy. Question, Post Malone, a male or female? I think it's a male. There you go. You know more than I. I like that you don't Call like Calling J-Mo this. right now. J-Mo. We're going to be friends. All right, I got to leave. Got to go back My to work. Lil Wayne. Lil, Wayne. Lil Weezy. <laughs> <laughs> these guys all sound like they 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 just they need more fiber. That's how these guys sound like. All right, thanks everybody for listening. Enjoy your afternoon.